talk a little bit more about uh, what it really means factoring polynomials graphically, right? We already talked about what it means to factor polynomials, which is basically just breaking them down to its core elements, right? But let's, let's take this a little bit further and just visually, graphically show what it means when you actually take a polynomial and you factor it. Now, when you're factoring numbers, just straight out numbers, you know, we've already talked about this in series one, right? You just take a number, you know, whatever integer it is, or whatever rational number it is, and break it down to prime factors, right? For example, six breaks down into two times three. For example, the number six, you can break down into two times three, right? And what we end up doing with polynomials is taking a polynomial and breaking it down to its prime polynomials, right? Breaking it down to its smaller degree polynomials, right? For example, if we had uh, the following polynomial, and we've already talked about this, we can break this down in the following form, right? So if we take the polynomial x squared plus 5x plus 6, we can break it down into x plus 2 times x plus 3, right? So all this is really is just one function, our original function that we were given, if they say factor this polynomial, we take this polynomial and break it into two smaller degree polynomials when multiplied together give you the original polynomial, right? Which is really one function is equal to two other functions multiplied together. So the way we can think about it is this, this polynomial, this function, we could, we could just call f of x. So f of x would be this guy. f of x is equal to h of x times g of x. And this guy would be our h of x, and this guy would be our g of x. Now, this is just basically terminology-wise, right? Graphically, we can you know, present this graphically. And graphically, this is, this is the way it's going to look like. This guy is a parabola, so we're taking our parabola and breaking it down into two functions that aren't parabolas multiplied together to give you the parabola. And these two guys here are linear functions, they're lines. So two lines multiplied together give you a parabola, and this is what it's going to look like. So our polynomial here, x squared plus 5x plus 6, is a parabola and its x-intercepts are x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to negative 3, right? We already talked about this. When you factor this guy, if this guy is equal to 0, all you're doing is finding the x-intercepts. So you can set each one of these equal to 0 and solve for them, right? So this is x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. So it's a parabola that crosses the x-axis as x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. So we got our parabola, this guy graphs something like this, and we're going to talk about graphing polynomials um, you know, more, more accurately when we get into graphing polynomials, when we start talking about completing the square. But this guy would be our f of x, right? But this parabola, if you break it down into smaller polynomials, is going to be two lines multiplied together to give you the original function. So what we have here is our h of x is basically y is equal to x plus 2. And again, we'll, we'll talk about you know, graphing linear functions. Uh, if, you, if you look into the polynomial section, you know, if, if, this is, if you're looking at this right now when I'm putting it up, I haven't done it yet, but we will talk about uh, graphing linear functions. So this guy, x plus 2, is just a line. It's a linear function with x, a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. So all you do is you find your y-intercept and go up 1 over 1. So that graphs a line, right? The other guy is also a linear function, a line, a linear line, right? With y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1, which is this guy. So if you take these two functions, multiply them together, you get this function. If you take these two lines, multiply them together, you get this parabola here. And this should be like, hey, wait a second, how can we multiply two lines and get a curve? Well, if you remember from series 1, what's two negatives multiply together, right? They give you a positive. So over here, we go down into the y equals negative. Down here, you got y is equal to negative, right? So two negatives multiply together to give you a positive. So it kicks the function back up. Over here, between negative 2 and negative 3 here, we have 
part of the function here is negative, or this this function here is negative when it goes below negative two, right? When you, you go past negative two on the x-intercept in the y section, you're negative here. Over here, negative two is here, and that's going to be positive for this function, right? So negative times a positive over here is going to kick you still in negative section, right? But as soon as you go past negative three or what is it? Uh, yeah, negative three here, right? Your y, your x-intercept is negative three as well. As soon as you go past your negative three here, then this function is negative and this function is still negative, right? So negative and negative kicks you back into the positive in this section, right? So two lines multiplied together give you a parabola. As long as the lines, you know, they go into, both of them go into the negative. As long as their, uh, their domains, whatever their x can be, continues on forever, right? So factoring integers, factoring rational numbers is just like this. It's just, you know, two different numbers multiplied together to give you the original number. Factoring polynomials is just two other polynomials multiplied together to give you the other polynomial, the polynomial you started with. Graphically, it's whatever these polynomials graph. Now, they don't have to be linear functions. It could be curves. It could be other polynomials, right? These two polynomials multiplied together give you the original polynomial. And that's what factoring is. We're taking things and breaking them up and seeing, you know, what they're made out of. And that way, you can take, you know, maybe we want to take this part whatever this thing is, and multiply it with another function, right? This part of the function, and multiply it by another function, just to create a new function, right? And, and uh, you know, that's what it is. That's what, that's what factoring polynomials means. You're taking, graphically anyway, you're taking a function and breaking it up into two other functions multiplied together. They may be lines, they may be parabolas, they may be quartic functions, cubic functions, they could be anything, right? They, and they don't even have to be polynomial functions, they could be non-polynomial functions, right? Things that have asymptotes, things that have, uh, you know, unknowns, vertical or horizontal asymptotes, right? They, things that have breaks, that have holes in them, right? You could take any type of, fun any, any two functions, multiply them together to give you a new function, and from that new function you can do new things or apply them in new places, okay? That's what factoring is. Factoring a polynomial, break it down to its functions. Factor rational number, break it down to its prime factors, right? Factor a polynomial, a polynomial is just a graph, right? It's just a graph of a function. Break it down to its new functions.